Welcome back, Beltawalda or Lada. Did I say that wrong? I say I almost want to say Beltawalda, but it's Beltalada. Sorry, folks. Welcome back to the Nerdrotic channel. My name is Gary Beekler. I'm live in San Francisco, California, and I come to you from nerdrotic.com. And down in San Diego is my good friend and co-host, Dennis Bethalkis. What's up, man? I'm not going to try and float my uh, intro there. You're a floater. <laughs> uh, welcome, uh, Screaming Firehawks, to The Expanse Recap Season 3. Not its final season, and no, that doesn't get old. Uh, episode 9. Uh, oh my God, I can't pronounce it. Uh, it was... Intrans intransigent. Intransigence. Intransigence, excuse me. Intransigence. Intransigence, yes. Couldn't read my own writing there for a second. Which I actually had the definition up, but uh, it's something about beliefs or something like that. So, uh, I, yeah, it's uh, yeah, a couple different meanings. But yeah. interesting, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> it's not important <laughs> right now. So, uh, a good episode tonight. Uh, but it's, it's really clear that uh, Ed, Ed, before we even get started, thank you, Morks. Uh, we spoil the hell out of this show. So, Dennis. Yeah. So, uh, just so you know. Uh, spoilers are coming now from here on out. If you haven't watched the episode, go and watch the episode. Come on back later on and you can watch us, you know, uh, on the YouTubes afterward and you can comment then. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, if you have watched it, welcome aboard and stay for the pie. Yes. So, uh, like I said, a good episode tonight, but it's real clear. Now, I'm not going to get into specific book spoilers, but a little later on, I'll just tell you what kind of they've left out because it's pretty clear they're just they, they've left out a large chunk of uh abaddon's gate which is the third book which is what we're we're in now which is great i mean they actually have done a good job of taking out uh of the books what they need for the show and remember they're two completely different things uh which makes it nice because you really don't want to uh see a total adaptation of your book I, I always die. That, that just doesn't work for me anyway. So I like to have two forms of media Ooh. to go to. Oh, thank, thank you, Dakota, Dakota Stanton. I'm at work, but have fun. Thank you for the $5 super chat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, very so, cool. Uh, yeah, we're going to dive into the episode a little bit here, and I'm going to start us out on this one. So uh, we start out on uh, the behemoth. And uh, you know what they have been, uh, what they do is uh, uh, sci-fi shows like the first three minutes of each episode. So some mm -hmm. of you might have seen this already uh, on the YouTubes. And um, it's basically uh, Ashford and Drummer uh, trying to get the grid back on the behemoth and Naomi, who is the chief engineer uh, on the ship. And she is taking uh, basically a, a, a girl named Sam, who was an engineer on the ship. And uh, this character, um, things played out differently, but I was a little worried if she, if she took all of Sam's role in the books. Book readers know what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, But it doesn't look like they're going to do that. They, again, they've, they've left a large chunk of it out. But Naomi is uh, still pissed at them for shooting at the Rossi. Uh, and she, yeah, she's not letting it go. Uh, she, you know, she's trying to do her job and, uh, Ashford comes up and, you know, he's trying to give uh, his version of a pep talk. You know, it's like, Hey, we had to do it. And she's like, listen, you know, and he's telling her to do her job. And she's like, I don't work for you. I don't work for Anderson Dawes. Yeah. Screw off, buddy. Um, and <laughs> I like how drummer comes back down and says, hate me later. Work now. Work now. Yeah. And drummer takes responsibility and that she does say she's sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Which is a very undrummer thing to do. Uh, and I love drummer. Okay. Absolutely love that character. She's like one of the best characters in this show. Uh, so I hope we get a lot more of her and, you know, Naomi storms off and, uh, that's, that's, we have that. So that, then we're at the ring. I, I just want to say, I, I did find it funny that the behemoth loses power after just firing once. Uh, yes. No, <laughs> that's, everything uh, yeah. blows out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, yeah, it's, it's this giant church ship. So yeah. it was not meant to do anything. None of the power grids. And that's something they get into in the books and the show real well. They, they explain like, you know, th these spaceships just don't work. Okay. We, we, uh, they have problems. Some of them are old, you know, and uh, the crew, some, sometimes the crew sucks, you know, it's, it, and they get into those little details. That's what makes this show separate from everything else, everything else. Okay. So we get to the ring. And we're learning a little more about the ring. So I'm going to, I've been resistant on saying this, but it uh, looks like they're not going to say it in the show. So what they're in is called the slow zone. All right. That's what they call it in the book books. So you have to go a certain speed 
through this uh through the uh the bubble part of the ring or you're going to be meat basically uh so they they kind of figured this out with some probes and they they figure out like what exact speed you have to go through to go through the ring um Again, that's a huge plot point that they've kind of left out from the books, which again, I don't have a problem with because they would need uh, a 25 episode season to tell that story. It's a good story. Check it out in the books. Um, so, and, and uh, we got, they could have done a little, you know, launch the probe. Okay. We need to go at this speed. Okay. We got it. Yeah. And they, well, and they did, they, they yeah. did, they, they, they essentially did that. Uh, we've got the UN uh, popping probes through and they're, you could see that they're kind of testing and the, and Mars is doing that as well. Um, so we have Amos, Monica, uh, Elio and, uh, Alex, um, and Holden, uh, trying to figure out, you know, they're what, what's happening is the, the missile that was fired at them is going away from them now, and it's going to the center. And, uh, what we see is there's some kind of sphere in the middle of the ring that, uh, is drawing everything to it. Um, but uh, the Rossi is can still, you know, it can still move inside the ring. But not, uh, Holden notices like there's no stars in there. It's just got, it's got like this, it's the ball. It's and this is different from the book. So it's it's wrapped in, it's got a structure inside. There's like a a wall. Uh, so you know they the the Mars ship eventually comes through right after launching a couple probes. So they're going after the Rossi and the Rossi uh, and the Mars ship launches a couple of probes. Um, one, you know, they, they do it at different speeds and one also goes to the edge of the bubble and just blinks out of existence. So they can't go towards the wall mm -hmm. and, uh, they can't, you know, they, so they're going to have to run from the ship and Holden can't get a hold of Miller. He's trying, you know, and, uh, and I'm glad they did this. Like every time he closes his eyes, Miller just doesn't pop up. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, like I kind of like how he says, you know, now he picks the time of all times to shut the hell up. Yep. <laughs> I know. All right. So. Um, as they're dealing with all this, uh, Amos, uh, the camera pops up and, and, um, you know, Holden is like, you know, and this is, this is again, like this in the books, Holden's very open about his conversations with Miller. And I love how people are just like rolling with it. You know, uh, he's like, Oh, Miller told me, and she's like, uh, Joseph Miller, the, the detective, the one who died. Yeah. That's not important right now. We're going to, we're going <laughs> to we talk, we got to worry about this shit. Um, and then Amos sees the camera popping up, right? And he smashes it. And right then he figures out that uh, old Elio was the spy on the ship. So uh, Amos goes full on Amos. At the, did I say Amos? Amos. <laughs> so I, Am, Amos. <laughs> Amos. Amos. Uh, <laughs> reminds me of my, when my kid was young, he used to over-enunciate everything. It's, yeah, long story. It's funny. Um, so uh, Amos, it, you know, pretty much accosts him and uh roughs him up a little bit uh and said you know you and me we're gonna figure out like what's going off the ship and uh, elio really doesn't know what he did he just followed instructions at this point you know so yeah he has he has no idea uh and on uh what was it the uh uh oh yeah so the also the mars ship has like locked on them now they can't fire anything and they know they can't fire anything so they're safe for the moment but the mars ship it, is in pursuit um, and there's two things to worry about, you know, like of one, they're going to get arrested. Uh, but I think they're more worried about actually losing the Rossi to Mars. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, actually that's what Mil or excuse me, Holden says at one point, he goes, you know what, we're trying to figure out a way to do this. He goes, I could try and get away, but I don't think we're going to make it cause they've locked onto us. And also we're going really freaking slow. So I think the best bet is just to give up, have them board us. And then tell them that, you know, we got, uh, well, that's later hijacked. on. Now. That's way yeah. later on. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting way ahead of yourself. Sorry about that. that. Yeah. I, I did get so, so, uh, so on the UN ship, uh, what, uh, they're basically, we see Christian Avasarla, but she's just on the screen and she's announcing that on all non-essential personnel are coming home. Like this is getting too dangerous. Things are getting too weird out here. This is, you know, the, the fact that they let him go in the first place was a little weird because <clears throat> they just got out of a full on shooting war and things are not cool at this point. And what's happening is, is, you know, it, it looks like this big kumbaya trip out there. Like we're all going to go out there together, but it's an actual race. Like people want to plant their flag in here and, and take control. Um, and you know, the belters kind of think they have a right you know, the, the, and, and they kind of have a case for it, you know, like space is ours. This is our territory. So, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So the, you know, so Anna has to go home and Anna doesn't want to go home. Mm -hmm. Um, so we get a little scene and we're also seeing Melba. We see a couple of little scenes with Melba 
and um we we see the first you know anna anna's kind of noticing melba and then we get melba uh sees uh uh, uh uh fagan what's her first name again i forgot uh tilly right tilly, tilly, tilly fagan yeah God, i can't believe i'm forgetting her name tilly fagan and it, it sends her to a flashback and we get to see uh a flashback with uh and we get to find out who melba is yes and uh, uh melba is a mao yes she is. she is she's a sister she's uh, a daughter of jules pierre clarissa mao yes so um yeah so we see uh Ju we see a flashback with julie mao julie mao's back looking great uh very healthy after crashing into venus um and uh she's arguing with her dad and she's dressed in black and she's in full-on rebellion mode but she's got a kind she's got a real good i mean a lot of people rebel against their fathers okay it's totally normal but um she's kind of got a point with her dad okay let's just admit that he's a yeah. bit sick. um she's like Fuck you, dad. Of course, they said in the version I was watching, they said, forget you, forget you. And you <laughs> forget just, you, man. You can totally tell she said, mother scratch you. Yeah, you mother scratcher. <laughs> 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 right. And, um, you know, Clarissa is, uh, you know, just is the sister that's like all down with daddy, wants daddy's respect and is not getting it. And it's funny because uh, Jules Pierre actually res respects Julie even yeah. more for rebelling against yeah. him. And it's also later on, yeah, he, yeah, he just pretty much cuts down Clarissa. I mean, just to the bone, man. It's it's pretty brutal. Yeah, but we see the 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 moment when Julie bails. Like that's yeah. that, that's the time she leaves right before all the uh, the stuff from uh, season one. You know, so uh, no, that was that was cool. That was cool, and uh, I was waiting for this to happen. They, they actually strung it along a little longer, and I thought they would. Uh, so we jump back to to uh, Elio uh, and Amos. And uh, it's an interrogation, and uh, you know, Elio doesn't know how to how to do any of this stuff. And again, Amos goes full on Amos because he is that guy. So he grabs <laughs> Monica Stewart, puts a puts a screwdriver to her neck, and uh, you know, she's trying to plead, and he's like, "Shh, quiet, quiet." <laughs> yeah, him. straight up being creepy, Amos again. Because you, um, you got to tell me what the hell you did to my ship to fix it. Yep, yeah. and uh, they can't. They can't. Yeah, they they you know. So and again, I know I know I got ahead of myself, but the, at, at this point we see the um, the Shuzun. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. The Shuzun uh, was sending you through probes, and uh, that's when they find out it's uh, 18 uh, kph, whatever the hell that is. Uh, I, I don't know kilometers per hour or uh, uh, kilometers per kilometers uh, per hour. Yeah, sorry. Second uh, uh, kph, yeah. kph, kph. Yeah, kph, yeah it's kph. Yeah. So it's, it, that's how fast you have to go to go through there. I'm sorry, I'm not an educated dude. Um, so everybody's matching course and speed. Um, th okay, this I'll, I'll this will be my only bummer uh, 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 that they didn't do this from the books. I understand why they didn't from the books, and again, you know, the books are not the show, but that's a huge plot point that makes um that's added to this uh that kind of really adds a lot of tension so again read the books it's it's such a good and i'll tell you about it you know afterwards dennis it's pretty good um uh but yeah so so they they go on through and then we're back on uh the behemoth um behemoth, behemoth. yeah the, the behemoth and uh ashford and naomi have a little chat in the hallway at this point and he's you know talking about nostalgia which is which you know i don't know if he went down there to talk her into it or talk her. i think ashford sees naomi as a problem that's what yeah I he, he wants he wants her gone so he's trying to talk her into just getting the hell out of there yeah so and and he's a shifty little and uh i love what they've done to him in the show like he is great like he you know he, he's sounding all nice and fatherly uh but he's definitely up to something and his little talk to which is supposed to be kind of a, a consolidating talk to naomi was actually uh get the fuck off the ship yeah <laughs> you know and uh he's all it's all about nostalgia you know and and uh you, you know what he was talking about he was he was basically using the the crew like you left your crew you're one of us now and uh you know you just you're basically thinking about all the good stuff you know and then the reason you came back but he knew that that she had left the opa first and she even mentions that but he knew what he was talking about so he played her pretty good yeah Oh yeah, he did. So then we go back over to the Thomas Prince, right? With uh, 
Anna talking to Tilly about uh, pulling some strings, All right? Uh, that was okay. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, and so we we have her uh, basically about getting uh, either staying on the ship and also for people who are getting off the ship because some people don't want to go through the bubble, of course, and they want to get off the ship. And uh, Anna's decided that she wants to go through it because uh, it's a miracle, the only miracle that's happened in her lifetime. And she wants to experience it. She wants to be, and that's what Tilly even says. She goes, so you're being a little selfish is what you're, is what you're saying. You're being selfish for the first time <laughs> kind right. of thing, which is kind of interesting. And, and she kind of is. Oh, yeah, she, she is. really is. Uh, and, yeah. You know, she hasn't. Well, she at least in her mind thinks she hasn't done anything, but she was also a you know a big protester and stuff, and yeah. So I don't know about that, but yeah, she's definitely she's su you know, just her career her curiosity, and there is people like this. Her curiosity is just totally taken over, you know, and you know she's feeling bad about it, but I mean honestly, that's a tough decision to make. Yeah, like, witness this, and yeah, it could kill you. It could, but uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's like that. If you could get a trip to Mars, would you take it? You know? Yep. If you knew that you weren't coming back kind of thing, would you do it still? Uh, you know, if you're uh, going to be the first person on Mars kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, before that scene, there was a quick little funny scene with uh, Alex, uh, you know, yeah. t knocking on the door to Holden and Holden's just got a look on his face. He's all, yeah, I was just, uh, you know, I would have called down, but uh, just no Miller, nothing. And uh, <laughs> Holden's just staring at him and he's like, okay. All right, bye bye. And he shuts the door on him. It was pretty funny. I thought it was funny anyway. Uh, a little moment of levity, you know. And this show actually has that, you know. There's plenty, of, and that's what another thing that separates it is is the humor. And it's not like you know forced joke humor. It's humor within the story, kind of what Star Wars used to do. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so Melba, we see Melba on board the Thomas Prince again there, and she's cleaning out Ren's locker. <laughs> <laughs> and the other uh, members of the uh, the shuttle that she's on the salvage crew uh, are like, hey, they're they're grabbing stuff like, yeah, dibs on this, dibs on that. And then uh, one of them grabs Ren's uh, little communicator. He has all the performance reviews on there. And she goes, oh, I want to take a look. And so she's pissed off because, you know, he says that she's spending too much time on social media. And then the other guy uh, he recommended for a promotion and for Melba, he says, oh, has gaps in knowledge but would be a really good addition to the crew uh, later on when she learns a lot more stuff, you know, and, and basically is it had kind words to say about her, which just really kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of works on Melba a little bit there because, you know, she killed him. Oh, dude. No, no it's every few minutes they're digging in, like yeah. how good of a guy Ren is. And this is, again, this is a little change from the books, but a, a similar things happens and it does weigh on her. And we're and it's just to show that Melba's not completely gone, although she's pretty far gone. Like, yeah, pretty far gone. So, and uh, we also have, um, uh, you know, with Amos uh, decides uh, he finds a way to communicate because their comms are jacked. They can't fix the ship. Elio can't help him. Monica can't help him. So he finds a really clever way to to communicate. He uh, yeah. he spaces them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, kicks him off the ship. Yeah, Alex runs up. Is like, what's going on? And you can see Amos going, put your, no, put your helmet on. Put your no, we don't want to go. No, 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 put your helmet on. Shh, you know, and uh, <laughs> and and it, it's actually it makes a lot of sense. He's like, listen, they're not involved in this. They don't want to get a Mars isn't going to arrest them. So maybe they'll at least tell them like we have no comms or something like that. And I thought, no, I thought it was a really good move. My Amos, yeah, uh, it's, it's fucked up, but it was a good move. You know, Hey, love Amos. The voice of reason on this show. <laughs> I know really, he really is. Um, and we also, we had done that flashback to, to, to Melba and Julie having it out, you know, out in the uh, yeah. gardens there. Uh, what you were just talking about a little bit earlier and, and Julie's attitude towards the family where she's just like, fuck you guys, you know, uh, I'm going to go do my own thing. I'm going to help the belters. And, you know, uh, we've, we've got Claire, uh, um, was Claire. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Clarissa, 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 sorry, Clarissa, Clarissa, uh, Clarissa, there we go. So uh, Clarissa is basically telling her, you know what, uh, um, the, the, you, you're basically delusional. You don't realize the irony of your situation, you know, of who your father is and what you're trying to do are just, you know, it, it's beyond 
hopeless for you is what she's saying and julie of course isn't listening to her and getting ready to leave you don't understand me you don't understand me you don't i'm a rebel daddy i'm a loner yep <laughs> that's what i was thinking too <laughs> but the thing is she kind of did understand her dad and she uh does play an important part eventually although yeah. it is he does get screwed badly yeah um, i i can see it coming man it's, i it looks... anderson does kind of in a way <laughs> yeah uh, then we go back to the Rossi and the Rossi crew trying to fix the ship and they've, you know, pulling out everything they can and uh, Miller not talking anymore. And, and that's kind of Holden's going, what the hell, man? He picks this time to shut the hell up. He's talking all the time, but now he's, he's shut up and he's right. still pissed off about this. And that's, this is where they start weighing their options of what they can do. If they can outrun it, but they said, okay, we're locked on by the Mars ship. Okay. The best thing to do is, is that we give ourselves up. Tell them that we were ambushed, that we didn't send out the communication because we don't have any communications, and we try and clear our names. And Amos is like, well, we're going to lose the ship that way. And he goes, yeah, we probably are. And he goes, great. So we're right back where we started then. Yeah. And Alex says, you know, when he's all, well, hopefully, you know, uh, Monica and, and, and old Elio out there will uh, will say something good to the Martians. And, and Alex is like, I wouldn't count on that. And uh, you know, uh, then Holden looks at Amos is all, I wish you would have run that by me first. He's all, sorry, Cap. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we should surrender. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then we go back to the behemoth and um, we see Naomi doing something on a screen. She's disabling something or turning it off. And uh, Asher is kind of peeking over her shoulder. And she does a little swipe and, of course, clear, tries to clear the screen. But I think he saw what she was doing there. She cleared her history. Yeah, she cleared her history. Yes. And and that's when we have Drummer starting to give the rah-rah speech to the Belters. Yeah. Beltalada. Beltalada, that's right. And she basically starts saying the Belters are the ones that own space. We're the ones that are out here. We're the ones who do things first. We're the ones that are going to go through these things first. And as they're doing this, uh, we have Ashford slamming down on the uh, the railing, and everyone else starts joining in with their feet, stomping. And you know, uh, yeah, uh, Betelota, yeah, that's right. right. Be Belta Betelota ver version of the slow clap. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, they're doing this. They're yelling and all this stuff as they go through the bubble. Yes, and this is a big deal. Trust me on this one. That, that was a big deal. Um, uh, then we're back on the UN ship. And this is that Catholic priest moment, which uh, it, I don't know. I, 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 at first, they kind of they were trying to make him look uh, a little uh, weak. But I love how it was just what basically it was showing Anna kind of maybe the error of her ways. Because mm -hmm. she was able to uh, get Tilly to you know to get her to stay uh yeah. tilly um has a lot of connections and uh she's a good character in the book i'm glad they they put her in also I, the only thing i question is when she said you know like when, when anna and her were having the, the the negotiation to have it on she's like oh, i'm an aging debutante i'm like what <laughs> you're yeah. like 10 you're not an aging debutante um yeah that was the only thing but uh yeah no the the catholic priest you know he, he was you yeah. could tell he was scared but Reverend Dr. Hank Cortez. Yes. He's a and reverend and a doctor. A, he's a redoctor. There you a go. Doctor. And um, that's a lot of school. Yeah. Um, yes. And he, you know, he he's obviously scared. He doesn't want to go, but he, he's got good reason. He's got kids. He's got a wife at home. And it's just reminding her, it's reminding Anna that you've got the same thing at home and you're staying. So, uh, you know, you can't and fault either of them really. And also while they're talking, uh, we get the, the the military shows up and they're like, that's him over there. And they grab this guy out of the line, you're out of uniform. So there's a guy that actually is trying to get off the ship because he's like, this isn't my war. He goes, I didn't sign up for this because I didn't sign up to fight aliens. I signed up to fight, you know, belters and Mars people. He goes, not aliens. He goes, I want to just get the hell off of this thing. Dusters. And, yeah, dusters. And uh, they're like, nope, you're coming with us. <laughs> Tase yep. them and they bring them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the priest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Polly Simeon says the priest essentially said, God is dead. Yeah. He said, God isn't out here with us. I made a mistake. Yep. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's a little faith crushing out there to see, you know, basically the technology of the gods. Uh, and they make a, a lot of references to that in the book and it kind of is, um, it's, it's insane. It's really insane. That's, that's, that's the cool thing about this is that, you know, uh, if, when trying to describe the expanse, it's, it's a little firefly, it's a little Battlestar Galactica and it's a little contact. It's a little yeah. bit of contact. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good stuff. And so this whole interaction between uh, Anna and Reverend uh, Dr. Hank Cortez there leads her to send out a message to her partner. And she says, you're not going to get this until after I've gone through the bubble. But I just want to let you know, this is my decision. I'm going to go through. And you can't stop me because I'm already here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I hope to come back. But I don't know if I will. We don't know what's going to happen. And we don't No. And, uh, yeah. And then, uh, Melba slash Cl Clarissa goes into Ren's, uh, baggage and, you know, pulls out a, a comm and sends a message, uh, through Ren's family. I think I caught that Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, to her dad saying, I I'm doing this all for you, daddy. Yeah. I'm doing it all for you. you. Destroy the man who put you in jail, who destroyed yep. your life. I can't fix anything, but I can. Fuck him up. So yeah. uh, now we know the motivation. She's and, all for Holden. And we also get a flashback of Clarissa talking to Jules Pierre. Uh, and he says, I admire Julie for taking off. You know, she's actually going to make a name for, you know, the family name is going to live on through her because she's actually doing something with her life. Because what are you doing? You're just planning parties. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, it was really kind of like what wow. an asshole. <laughs> what yeah. a complete jerk. Father of the um, year. Father, father of the year. year. Yeah, another good father in Hollywood there. <laughs> there you go. Um so uh yeah. So Naomi is uh trying to like press something and she can't access it, and uh then drummer yeah. walks up behind her. She's and trying to get to the skiff. Yep, and she's like, you know, it's funny, Ashford told me to lock everything down. Mm -hmm. somebody might want a dessert but i didn't think it would be you et tu naomi et tu um and naomi's you know basically said listen i thought uh, it would be different i you know I, I was wrong why i left i need to get back to my my family my crew and uh you know i didn't go and tell you because i was afraid you wouldn't let me go and drummer's like uh, you underestimate me she didn't she didn't even say you underestimate me she just reaches down to her pad and hits the button and like pops open the door and she goes, then she says, you underestimated me. Yeah. Like, she, yeah that's that's yeah, kind of she, cool. She said that it was cool. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, you're, you're just funny. <laughs> Dennis, you're funny. Um, <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> um, no, she didn't say that, but she did. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I know, what? I know what <laughs> no, she didn't, but she did. She yeah. didn't say that, but she did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha, buddy. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, so, so drummer lets her lets her go, and uh, Naomi looks, you know, properly sad. Um, but you know, drummer's cool. They, those two are tight. You know, they were cool. So, uh, and she was a little disappointed. She's like, "What? I was, you know, what am I? Chopped liver out there? I'm a chopped belter. Come on, please." Um, then she says, you know, don't move too fast out there. And she takes off. So, uh, we get the final scene with, uh, Holden holding, holding Miller's badge. Yeah. And, and Miller finally shows up. Miller shows up. Yeah. And says they need to look at the crime scene. And he goes, what the hell are you talking about the crime scene for? He goes, I want to know what you know. So Miller starts going, so you want to know about the microtubules of the brain and how yeah. <laughs> you know, and he starts going into all these scientific explanations and Holden just looks at him and goes crime scene, huh? Crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> and Miller's like, yeah, crime scene. <laughs> crime scene. And he's all, you seem different. He's all, oh, the signal's better in here. You yeah. know? So, uh, yeah, he's, 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 he's back to being, well, Miller, as Miller as this Miller can be, um, and says, we need to get to the nucleus. We need to go to the center. Yeah. Got to go to the center. You and, and the, me right now. And then we have this little uh, scene of Naomi coming back to the ship and she's trying to contact the Rossi and she's not getting any response, of course. And she goes, hold on, guys, I'm coming. And that's when we see Holden finally on the outside of the Rossi in his suit. And he's looking up at the nucleus and we see him kind of just bend down just a little bit and he jumps off. And that's where we leave. the Yes. End. That's where they uh, actually start the, the book. 
they start the book of of him just going what the fuck am i doing out here you know he's like yeah. floating in space going towards the nucleus and then, and then they go into uh the kid slingshot shouting but it's it's cool it's cool so yeah so that's where the episode ends and shit is moving fast and we saw yeah. scenes for next week and bobby's gonna be back so that's yes, gonna be is. cool and a shitload of martians from what it looks like oh yeah no this this is really really cool the way they, they've done this yeah that's uh and wow you are all going to get some answers next week to a lot of your questions, I believe. So, um, yes, great episode. Let's get to the chat again. If you're new, there's a lot of new people. Welcome, welcome, new subscribers. Uh, we break down the episode, but then we want to hear from you after we're done. And we are at this point. Let's hit the chat. Hello, everybody. Man, we got a full room tonight. And it's good to see you all. It's good to see you all. So we have uh, Grevlin says Amos at the airlock. Absolutely hilarious. Get your helmet on there now. Go on. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, Mui Finobi says, welcome to arrivals. If you have balls, stay in this wonderful chat. If you're squeamish, the civilian transports are loading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're not that bad, really. Yeah, we are honestly the tamest chat I've that I go through. So Yeah. Yeah, move for I also agree. They said they didn't pursue the suspicions Anna had about Melba last time. Yeah, they just kind of left that go. And yeah. as a matter of fact, uh, Anna talked to Melba at one point and asked her, she says, you know, what's why are you still here? And that's when we had the flashback uh, for Clarissa with what happened with Jules Pierre Mao. Well, Tilly could, w could recognize Melba, too. That's another yeah. part I forgot to mention that uh, Tilly and Melba were at the same party. So Melba's like, "Ooh, got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, and that's going to come into play. Uh, yeah. And, um, and right. Melba basically says, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm here because of the hazard pay. Yep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I thought that was actually a good, a good answer. It's like, good answer. Good answer. It's like family feud almost in a way. Uh, Mako says, uh, you're rich and evil dad. I hate you. Now let me wear the clothes you bought, eat the food you paid for and fly around the ship. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dakota Stanton said fucking super chat. Wouldn't let me say donkey balls. <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> why not that's weird yeah there must be some stipulation on super chat i don't know i'll look i don't i have, i don't have anything up there you guys can say donkey balls all you want it's all right uh stun the wombat says so many good moments in this episode i had an idea melba was a mao yes. yes yeah they were they were telegraphing it earlier off in the season because uh mao more than once said daughters so yeah. they, they wouldn't say that they and, and plus all us book readers knew and just a reminder, I haven't read the books. Um, it's not because I, I take great pleasure in not having read the books or anything like that. I just haven't had the chance to. And also, I kind of, since Gary has read the books and I haven't at this point, actually going through these uh, these episodes like this is actually kind of a good way for people who haven't read the books are kind of like me, and people who have read the books are kind of like Gary. So that's how we go through this. Yeah, it's kind of I nice think it's little. really good. Uh uh, did you go above the super chat? Did you start above the super chat? I did not go above the super chat. No, I did not. Okay. I, uh, I was like an Artemis over easy says, uh, you know, uh, they were just showing drummer some love. She had a very good episode. That speech was really good. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. It was a very, yeah, a very arousing. That was actually a John G. Avildsen kind of move. Uh, yeah, uh, there you go. You know. uh, Karate kid, by the way, those of you who don't know who John G. Avildsen is. R.I.P. Um, uh, Free Maniac. Paracusa says, uh, kind of glad they didn't make Melba Julie's identical twin this time around. <laughs> yeah, that would have been kind of weird having her being, you know, Julie's identical twin. That would have been a little bit on the weird side. Scott Weaver says, I enjoy listening to these discussions, except when you reveal upcoming because you've read the books. Uh, I have yet to reveal anything upcoming from the books. Yeah, see, I don't know any of that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I haven't heard you uh, say anything during yep. this episode about what's upcoming. You just said what was different from the books. I say what's different. Yeah, but I'm not specific about what's different, and I yeah, I do not say what's upcoming. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, unless I, you're talking about my illusion of things are coming, things are going to happen. Questions will be answered. <laughs> Some more questions will be made. That's about as far as I'll go. Yeah. Which is what happens when you're watching a serialized TV yes. show. 
But uh, Polly Simeon says she's taking our name into the future. What do you do? Organize parties. Yeah. <laughs> hey, organizing parties is not easy. Okay. It's not. I don't want it's that put down hard. at all. Okay. Yeah. That said somebody who doesn't organize parties, jackass. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he had some really good parties thrown for him. And did he appreciate them? No, of course no. not. No, he wasn't organizing any of that shit. He was out, out in the room. Send everybody home. He said, yeah, fuck you, dude. Um. Yeah, a Viking Mitch says, I feel bad for Melba. She will never win her father's love ever. No, nope. no, no. And I think she's actually okay with that. I think she's just kind of doing it for herself to kind of prove it to herself, not to him. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's an insecurity for her. I mean, he yeah. does love her. He does love yeah. her. I mean, he's, uh, but it's respect he's looking for. It's not love. Yeah. It's respect. Yeah. And uh, that he will not give too much of anybody because he is a psychopath. So, um, Really? I never noticed that with the yeah. churning of children. Yeah. Like kind of thing. Uh, Polly Simeon says, after reading the churn, I figured Amos was going to go full loco on her, uh, meaning the reporter there. Uh, Caravaggio 2012 says Amos likes Clarissa. All right. And anyone Amos likes is a okay with me. Uh, that's spoiler spoiler. Um, Sorry about that. yeah. Gravel, uh, Gravelian says Amos three drones, zero. Yes. <laughs> Amos got those big eyes says Viking bitch. Yes. And smoochy <laughs> lips as my wife says, uh, she also likes the apps though too. Yeah. Uh, Viking bitch says, I have known other people that try their whole lives to gain a parent's love. So I felt bad for Melba. She needs to let dad go. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and also parents, show a little respect to your kids. Okay. Not, I mean, like you gotta, no, yeah. you gotta, you gotta, there's a balance there. There's you can't, balance, uh, yeah. yeah, you, you can't just let them walk wanna, all over you. Well, you can't, you know, there's, you gotta have good boundaries. You can't yes. give them awards for everything. And, Everything is not awesome. Okay. So, um, Louis Fenobi says the blue hole was probed. I'm glad Smurfette wasn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, time out. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the second episode in a row, uh, two nights now that we've had a giant hole that people have been going into. Yes, there is. Is there something <laughs> to that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that well, was about. We, yeah. Uh, Polly Simeon says Ashford knows Naomi questions everything and his plans don't allow for that. Yeah, he's definitely planning something and I can't tell if he wants to take over the ship from drummer, although they've already had this conversation about that, or if he's just trying to set drummer up so that she fails or if he's got something else in mind altogether. So that's, uh, yeah, I, I I can't tell honestly. I know Gary, you know, so uh, but not saying anything. Yeah, exactly. uh, general consensus: we don't like Melba. You're not supposed to. Yeah, You're not supposed. I mean, yeah, you uh, maybe feel sorry for. Her. I uh, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm old bastard. I, a little bit, but I mean, you know, there's there's also. I mean, she's a full grown adult. If she was like a 16 year old, different story. But you know, yeah. Mui Fenobi says he said it never works to go back. I believe Naomi belongs there, but I guess we shall see. I almost thought the Rossi was going to pass through the bubble and leave Naomi behind because no comms. Now Mako loves Melba and uh, I can't say anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Grove Lane says Blu-ray bring the fucks. Yes. Right. Yeah. The Blu-ray transfers are very good on the show, by the way. Uh, Polly Simeon says, I'd go to Mars if I knew there was a phenomenon like the ring, but as it is, no chance. Yeah, just a big old dust. Well, you never know. Under that dust, there might be a pyramid or something like that. Which Mars movie was that? Uh, not oh, not uh, the Total Recall, to but the, the Mission to Mars. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That was a good movie. I like that. Or one. Richard Hoagland. Richard Hoagland, face on Mars guy. Okay. Just, yeah. Well, uh, that's what it was. It was the face on Mars that they uncovered with yep. the sandstorm. Yeah. They went inside of it. I actually it. like that movie. Does that make me bad? Person? Yeah, it's a good movie. I mean, yeah. Tim Tim Robbins dies early on, which is really kind of cool. Yeah. He dies in a in a kind of weird way too, which is interesting. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 
Uh, Stun the Wombat says, one way ticket. Yep, I'd go. I have a huge sense of adventure. I love to be the first, uh, one of the first shot into space just to find where, what it is, what is there. Excuse me. Yep. So <clears throat> in that, this email that I'm crafting to my boss, uh, which has taken an insane amount of time because I do not want to sound like an idiot. And I have time now. There's, I mean, the show's saved and everything. So I'm taking my time, but I'm going to, I'll have it finished by the time we, the season's over. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, the whole Mars colony thing and stuff. So it's still a bit too long, though. It's a bit wordy. Um, Polly Simeon says Elio didn't hand back the missing comms component he pocketed last episode. That's right. No, That's I think right. I thought he pocketed it and switched it out with another one. But oh, a comms. Yeah, I, ooh, I, I don't remember that. I do not know. Yeah, because he uh, did. I, he did switch it out and put it in his pocket. Well, I'm not sure if we've seen the last of them. I'm not sure. Mm. They they've actually yeah, changed a bit, quite a bit. So, uh... um, Mako asks is asking you, Gary. Did they send animals, monkeys, into the ring before entering inside the book, Gary, or were they as stupid there as they are in the show? <laughs> they use probes. I mean, the pro they don't need to. They've they've got the probes are are good. They're very advanced probes. Yeah, it's a couple hundred years in the future. So I mean. Yeah. That's definitely going to be better than what we have now and what we can think of. And and they sh they showed it. I mean, they showed them like doing one fast. Uh, believe me, they're w w w mm, I, yeah. I don't want to say, but uh, they use probes. Yeah, and uh, uh, they showed one going fast in the show, and then one was going slow. So. And Carlos Negron says the comments is the second best thing about this live cast. Thank you, Carlos. Ah, uh, I think it's the best. I think I it's the best too. Chad yeah. is the best. Uh, kind of you say, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> free man, uh, free manic Paracusa says, Anyone catching the book that the oh, okay, the book that the crew Melba was in was named Ren, Stan, and Bob Robert House Baratheon? Much, ah, uh, uh, do you know? I did not catch that. <clears throat> That's good. I, I did not catch that. If that is true, that is, is awesome. Yes. Renly, Stannis, and Robert. <laughs> there you go. Uh, House Baratheon has not fared well. Let's just say. Yeah. Let's just say. Uh, Lou Finobi says, we were talking earlier about how Mars says, strongly advised against going into uh, into the ring. Everyone else, hey, let's go. There were so many ships that entered. <laughs> well, they, they, well, they don't believe them. I mean, uh, it, the thing is with Mars, they probably are being honest. Like Mars is an honest country. Like they, everybody makes them out to the, be these big bad guys and stuff because they're, they're a scary military. But when you, every time we're on a Martian ship, and this is within the framework of the show. Every time we're on a Martian ship, they're pretty good dudes. You know, uh, they, they came off creepy in the very beginning, but once you start walking around the ship, like, they were cool. They they helped people, and uh, yeah, so they were probably being straight up like, "Hey, you probably don't want to come in here. It's not a good idea." Um, and you know, of course, Earth and and the OPA are are, you know, the OPA deserve to be jaded, and Earth is just. I hate to say my people are evil, but man, we're bad. We're not yeah. very good. Yeah, um, I, I it's it. better that Christian is in charge. I'm all down with that. Uh, I feel good about a good uh, Avasarla administration, but. Uh, Four more years. Oh, there. oh yeah. Dude. Uh, Mako says even in Stargate, they sent things through the ring first, and Stargate is more fantasy than sci-fi. Yeah, they had that um, pro. It was, it was kind of like a probe on wheels that they would send through with a camera, and they'd look around because uh, well, they would leave the gate open. To they did. Yeah, they, they sent did. They the sent belter, probes. They sent the belter through. They sent probes through, and the Rossi went through, and a missile went through, and then the Martians said, "Screw it." We're going through. And once the Martian ship went in, it popped back out and, and, and everybody saw, okay, it looks like you can go in and pop back out. Let's go. Um, and, and, you know, and maybe they thought they were going to die. You know, at, at some point you got to go and you got to claim your territory. Uh, cause it's important because oh. you'll find out why it's important. You know, $10. Thank you very much. Uh, that was, uh john bellman martians seem to be the good guys honorable and just want to be left alone to terraform their home planet straight up john i love the yeah. martians i freaking love the martians so, and thank you 
Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so dollars. much. Very generous. Awesome. Wow. Um, Polly Simeon says, question, Miller in episode eight says, they kill the investigator if they if I exceed my parameters. Who is they? That's a good question. I We haven't found out yet. Uh, uh, we do not know yet who yeah. they are. Um, if we can do an assumption, you know, uh, like I'm Miller, aliens. Miller is, is, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens, but it's aliens. No. So Miller was, uh, Miller is here. We're assuming from the, uh, the proto molecule, right? Proto molecule has been up to some weird stuff. We had arrows. Mm -hmm. Um, it looked pretty horrifying on arrows, but as things keep moving forward, it, it's looking less horrifying and more like it just has a job to do um and we get this big ring and we don't know what the ring is at this point it's just a big ring it's a big bubble with a sent spherical thing in the middle of it we don't know what purpose it it's serves kind of crunchy, um I, other than like you need to go slow in it that's all we know right now it's not a chewy center it's a crunchy center did you read the mako i hate you dad oh uh, no i did not no, i hate you dad you'll see now give me the money and uh, uh, for my extravagant lifestyle, while most of the planet lives on basic, right? Yep, that's typical. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, uh, we were talking earlier on how Ma, uh, Mars strongly. Of, oh, you already read that one. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Caravaggio 2012 says Clarissa Mao is a character that never truly comes to live until she passes through the gauntlet of tragedy and pain, kind of like some certain host from another show that we cover. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, I can't talk about that though. So we gotta, we gotta, yeah, we got to watch yeah. the future uh, talk in the chat there folks. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Cl uh, Clarissa Mao is a very interesting character. Um, so yeah, don't give up on her. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, the only thing I can promise is she's not annoying. Okay. At least I don't find her annoying. Uh, Mako says I'll miss the Catholic priest. Now who will solve the mystery of the ring? Maybe Scooby doo Scooby. and his. Yeah. Team That's funny, Mako. Teenagers. Yes. Uh, no, who will bless the ring? I guess that's that's the that's the question. Anna will now, I guess, with her non-denominational, uh, whatever, Scientology church or whatever she's the church of. I don't know. Um, and uh, Dina McCombs says, "I love Drummer. I do too. I really love Drummer. She's awesome." Uh, my movie favorite every... drummer scene is when she, uh, right after she got shot in the stomach and she just blew oh, yeah. at those dudes. Like <laughs> she, she was like having none of it, man. It's like we got prisoners, fuck prisoners. Boom. Actually, when she's uh, hanging upside down doing the uh, the uh, ab crunches with yep. that bullet hole in her, she's like, Ugh, Ugh, and I'm like, Me okay. remember when Arrow used to do those like every oh, yeah. every episode for season one up in the Sandal ladder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was actually pretty funny. What's up, the Firebird man? How's it going? Uh, Mui Finobi says, I was waiting after they sent the reporter message uh, messengers for them to say that we can reboot the whole system and see if we get our ship back. Hold on to your butts. Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Off and on. Is it plugged in? Is it plugged in, sir? Uh, <laughs> uh, Freemanic, how, how, sure? says, how do you say it? Freemanic Paracousia? Yeah, I had to. Uh, Sorry, to really. If, yeah, I, I, if you want to put in how to pronounce that, that'd be great. Uh, dusters and skinnies. You're right. The dusters and skinnies. Yeah, uh, that's the Earther terms for Mars and the belt. Uh, the fire, the Firebird man says, "Why was Mars the first to go in? I mean, I know they're on a serious repo mission, but damn." Ah, uh, <laughs> dude, the Rosie's badass. No, um, Mars is the more technically advanced uh, group. Yes. They have better ships, better probes. Uh, and they are like, they're a military culture. So they are all about the mission and getting up in there. Uh, movie Fenobi says, in contrast, Gary, didn't Mars first contract Mao to make the proto weapons? Um, no. It was no, actually, was... Uh, it was, uh, Mars found the proto molecule first, okay, on Phobos. Yeah, uh, it had been on. It, it had been sent there uh, millions of years ago, and they just found it. <laughs> and then it, you know, they did do some experimenting on it first. But and maybe that was Mao. Maybe they were with Mao. I I can't remember to be honest with you. Uh, but then Aaron Wright started working with Mao on that stuff, uh, and I think Mao was just looking for the highest bidder. Uh, and you know, Aaron Wright 
you know, it's it, it was the nuclear arms race basically with a with an alien thing. So, um, yeah, Mars isn't totally innocent. Don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. There's bad guys in everything. We just really haven't seen that yet with Mars. <laughs> Grevelin says, can we talk about the huge damn new tat above Naomi's breasts? Um, I, I noticed that that was some uh, fresh. That was fresh ink. That was that definitely was fresh, fresh ink. ink. Yes. Um, I, I, let me tell you something. Uh, it hurts right there. Uh, now I don't have one yet right there, but I've seen a big, big muscly man, like tears coming out of his eyes. But then again, I saw my wife getting one and she was like snoozing. So I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's that whole like we can give birth thing and have a tolerance to pain. Maybe just saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, Polly Simeon says Mars going in without confirmation or survival seems like they have some inside info regarding the Rossi surviving. I'm suspicious. Someone in the Mars camp is in league with Melba. Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be. Yeah, possibly. Um, free manic. Paracusa says no argument there, but like everyone else, the Martians aren't pure good. That's what he's saying. No, he no, no, but no, nobody is pure good. No, uh, no. They, they, they like at, right now they've been presented as kind of the they've been presented kind of nice. Um, yeah, up to this point. Uh, but nobody, I mean, that's this is a show of grays, and that, that's it, that's why it's a lot like Game of Thrones. Okay, Game of Thrones, there's you know, there's good people in the in service of bad people. That's one of the things George R. R. Martin wanted to, you know, to to prove. Because you have like the Onion Knight, right? You have Davos, who uh, you know is in service to Stannis, and I know Stannis has his fans, but he's, you can't tell me he's a good dude. He's not a good dude. Um, and, but Davos, the Onion Knight, is. He's solid. Like they don't get better than him. So, uh, yeah, that, that uh, they do a good job of that in this show too. Stun the Wombat says Lopez the Martian that helped Holden off the uh, Donator was a great character. Well played by the actor. Seemed creepy at first, but later in the episode, I had total respect for him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Kathy Shark says the MCRN is no less corrupt than Earth. Remember how they bargained with for Proto Molecule with Jules Pierre Mao and Protogen? Yep. Yeah. And I think that was more the. Uh, the higher up in command, not just the general Martians. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, the earth has Christian who's like really good. Okay. So we, I mean, you know, Aaron Wright and they had Gillis, uh, uh, who was just an, a, an idiot. I mean, he wasn't really evil. Um, he was just a buffoon politician, kind of like a lot of what we have in office, uh, across both parties right now so uh yeah so i thought he was very representative of a your typical politician um aaron wright you know he had his beliefs they were weird and wrong and evil but he did at least he had his beliefs and, and he did kill a martian you know administrator too which is you know dark yeah, yeah. uh free manic paracusa says my handle comes from an xkcd comic treated as two words all right. All right. Did you read that uh, Bonobi joke? I can't remember. I did not. Okay. Um, uh, two, a, pri a priest, a priest, a rabbit, and a tortoise walk into a bar. Oh wait, the bunny isn't real. <laughs> That's for Legion, dude. <laughs> a movie Bonobi. <laughs> yeah, really. That's for Legion. <laughs> That's good. No, I like it. <laughs> Too good says, dude, jumping into it. I really want to read the books, but don't want to spoil the show. Yeah, um, see, that's how I am too on that. Well, okay. Then all you need to do is read the first two books right now. You can, because then uh, the show will not be spoiled. Uh, I will be doing book reviews. Uh, I'm going to do the first two books before the season ends, I believe. So it won't spoil anything. Uh, then over the summer, I'll do book reviews and just, yeah, just don't, just listen to them later once you've read the books. Uh, Arthur Peer, uh, Pyers said, I read somewhere that The Expanse was originally meant to be a game. Is it true? Yeah, yeah it was yes. supposed to be a game at one point. So that was true. And they just changed that. I think it was, it was supposed to be a tabletop game. Am I correct? I believe so. Yeah. 
yeah. like RPG or something like that. RPG, yeah, yeah. something uh, along those lines. Which uh, is it? I mean, like, uh, help me out, Screaming Firehawks, because like I might actually, I don't do that kind of stuff, but I might consider it for the expanse. Like, uh, yeah, tabletop games, man, are getting huge now. Again, yeah, so, they are. They are. Uh, Holly Simeon says in episode eight, Ren and Melba go to the support vessel, opens the panel, and bombs just waiting. There has to be a larger conspiracy. Uh, no, she planted the bomb. Yeah, she planted the bomb. She, she planted the bomb. Yeah, she. she yeah, so she planted in episode planted seven. It. Yeah, well, at the uh, very end. Of seven. Miller had four G light inside the slow zone. <laughs> it's kind of what uh, Direct TV had today for Dennis. Yeah, it must have yeah. been in the slow zone. Yeah. It was very much in the slow zone, man. Um, <laughs> Free Maniac Paracusa says, remember when Diogo, Diogo got his neck tat? Yes. Well, uh, the thing is, uh, people were noticing Ashford's got the scars, you know, on his neck. And the neck uh, tat, I told you, like, this last episode, that the reason the belters have the neck tats, uh, it's a symbol. Because they uh, the older belters have scars on their necks from working out in space for so long, so they put the tattoo to cover the scars and it became a belter symbol um, oh. it's cool that they think about stuff like this artemis over eve easy says nerdrotic channel thoughts on what the title refers to interest okay intra i heard it god dang it i could pronounce transients in transients right uh refusal to change one's views or to agree about something uh holden naomi anna all of them all of them well Eh, uh, always I pretty open-minded and so is naomi i would say it's uh gonna be somebody else I i'm gonna say it's miller not miller but the proto molecule if you will is what that's that, that's what my intransience is that's what i'm getting from that but um mm, probably not maybe. but yeah i don't know um Mako says, and where are all the Mormons? They robbed them blind and tossed them aside. They're still trying to find a ship. <laughs> uh, actually, I th that could actually relate to some of the belters. Not all, but some of the belters. And actually, everybody, uh, I think it refers to governments. To be, yeah. Now that I think about it, it refers to the three governments we're talking about here. Um, because the situation they're faced with, they really shouldn't be fighting and like, bitching over territory at this point kind of think of it again i go back to game of thrones we got the white walkers coming not everybody believes it but you know spoilers the white walkers are coming to destroy westeros or do something to westeros and they're not good um and but we've got the game of thrones going on the whole all the squabbling meanwhile the boogeyman's outside the the barbarians are at the gate and they're zombies they're ice yeah. zombies with dragons it's like what the, christian has said i mean christian said uh you know, we need to work together. We we don't need to fight anymore. We need to work together for this thing because this is an important time in humankind. Yep. And yeah, they're still like, yeah, whatever. That's great. Yeah, so human to like, nope, we want to plant our flag on that thing yeah. first. It's like, oh yeah, we'll work with you. No oh, problem. Let's take my dick in this thing first. Um, yeah. That's pretty much what it is. Okay. That was, well, I would say mark your territory, but that's, uh, yeah. Sorry, I was a little far. Along. Wow. Dennis, Jesus. You gotta get on a fucking timeout, buddy. Yeah, that one I do. Potty. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Free Maniac Paracusa says, uh, no, actually, that's a book spoiler, so I'm going to keep it off to the yeah, side. Yeah, but can't say, yeah. I mean, okay, I'm not telling you what to say in the chat, but uh, yeah, I get I get a lot of crap for even saying the word book. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Like, <laughs> I, I read it, and I was like, no, I'm not going to say Spoilers, you read the book. It's yeah. like, it's book. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe we, refusal for all the groups to work together for the better of man. Instead, they are having the same attitude when the war is going on. Uh, no, I think you're right. Uh, stun the Wolbot. I think that's exactly it. I had to kind of work my thoughts through on that one, but I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I we're getting near the. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are at the end. We are yeah, at we're coming near the end. Yeah. So, uh, the, what you. Uh, the, Read a couple more chats that pop up while I. Get um, Kathy Shark says the difficulty with doing uh, the Expanse tabletop would be how do you map out acceleration, speed, complex trajectories, and 3D space combat like that on simple paper? Yikes. 
Yeah, I just skipped that part. <laughs> I know yeah. it's kind of important though for the show. So yeah, that's that's a good that's a good question. Maybe that's where they're like, maybe we should write a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh Polly Simeon says, I'll have to go back to episode seven and look out for Melba placing the bomb. I don't recall seeing that. Yeah, that's when they first get on board the uh the ship there. Yeah, it's a it's a fast scene. And they've done that. Yeah. Like Melba's only gotten, you know, like uh like really, I got to start this over. Sorry, um, has only gotten like really short scenes, but they've done well enough. And this, she kind of, they, yeah, they gave her a lot more story this episode. Yeah, on uh, this episode, yeah, they actually had a lot longer uh, projects, a lot longer scenes with her. Excuse me, projects. Ugh. God, a Moss Green Coop said, "Would the Miller projection have been able to reach into the Rosante if Rosante. there was?" I'm going to just say Rossi. There we go. go. Into the Rossi. Rosinante. Rosinante. Yes, there we go. Uh, If there wasn't a remnant piece of protomolecule accidentally overlooked in it. That's a good Um, question. That Um, is a good question. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, we haven't found that out as of yet. Yeah, we we have not found that out yet. Uh, Kathy Shark says, unlikely it's pure luck that that bit of PM was on the, the Rossi. Uh, Alex did refer to destiny. Isn't it yeah. kind of weird that we're all kind of out here at the same time doing the same thing? And yeah, it is a little weird. Uh, by the way, Chad Walsh and Marcel are our newest patrons. They did not, they were not on the graphic. Thank you very much for joining us. What you just saw in the graphic there was our wonderful, loyal, and amazing patrons. Thank you so much for signing thank you. up. Definitely. Uh, also, want to thank once again the super chatters who were. John Bellman for ten dollars and Dakota Stanton for five dollars. Thank you so much. I do Thank appreciate you. it. I'm going to do one more question here, sure. and then uh, we're going to end Work it. Yep. Uh, Holly Simeon says, "So, who created the video of Holden claiming the ring for the belt? Melba two, or is she at least in cahoots with El- Elio?" Um, yeah, we haven't figured out who did that video, but we know that uh, Melba was the one who broadcast it, so she already had it on that communicator and was ready to go. So it's somebody yeah. else. It's definitely somebody else. It's definitely somebody else. Melba was the one who communicated, and according to Elio at the time, he he just he just was told to put certain things into the ship. He didn't know what those things were. That's what he says anyway. I don't know if you want to believe them. That's too, entirely up to you, but we do not know the answer to that question. Yet. Yeah. And Rob Stuffel being asked, do you publish schedule of live chats? That's a perfect question, which leads straight into, yes, we do. On our website, nerdrotic.com, you can find all our schedules and all of our shows that we cover. You can also find us on Facebook. Uh, you can also join our Facebook page. We have two different ones. We have one that just gives you the news and one where you can actually participate in the chat. That's a neurotic podcast group. We also have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Twitter accounts. I'm at DeForce. Gary is at Nerdrotics with an S. You can follow us there as well. And everything can be found on our uh, YouTube page as well and on our website. Yeah. Yeah. Our next video <clears throat> will be uh, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we're doing Cloak and Dagger, or yeah. I'm doing Cloak and Dagger. And uh, then we have Friday Night Tights. That's our 8 p.m. Uh, news podcast where we just talk to you guys for a couple, three, maybe four hours. Who knows how it goes on Friday? And then it's Westworld, and the whole thing goes around again. We got the Legion finale next week, and then we got more uh, got more Expanse. We are going to be covering 12 Monkeys for that four weeks. Cage. Uh, we have a Farscape recap of doing that's Yeah, it's all there on the website. We're going to be doing Luke Cage, uh, Castle Rock later in the summer, uh, mm-hmm. and Preacher's coming. Oh, yeah. Preacher's on the 24th. So excited for Preacher. I can't wait. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of other stuff. And if there's a show we're missing, uh, please holler at me. Um, although I'm having a little trouble, I got to catch up on a lot of stuff. So, I mean, and, you know, there's that whole day job thing we have to deal with. So, all right. Oh, yeah. So, and uh, uh, also please uh, remember to do a little thumbs up on our chat here uh, at the bottom. Uh, yeah. Just go like, ahead and hit like, the- share and subscribe, yeah, like, like, share subscribe. and subscribe. Exactly. And also our Patreon. You can also join our Patreon. Uh, we have a $1 tier, a $5 tier and a $15 tier. And I think we're going to be adding another one, correct? Yeah, uh, we're going to, we're adding a something else to it. Once we hit 4,000 subscribers, there we go. This is going to be a shout out. So uh, Mork's uh, Philip A. Demick, 
uh killjoys uh, i don't maybe I, mean, I gotta check it out man if i have time philip uh carlos and negron uh movie Fenobi, uh free manic uh paracusia sorry good night um rob uh stufflebeam pen farm girl uh, uh mako artemis over easy viking bitch morks uh giorgio mesquada mescada sorry giorgio i apologize if i screwed up your last name welcome thank you uh Polly Simeon, how are you uh stun the wombat love that name carvaggio 2012 albert epstein with his epstein drive um kathy sharks uh do, do, uh, Mikey I, already bitch. Said, I already said that one uh, oh, yeah. okay uh and that's almost as far as i can go so uh oh uh ronnie boss uh and yes we do like to thank everybody we can uh, in here if possible and uh, i'm gonna answer real quick uh tom cat asks why have the last two expanse chats started late we sometimes have a little difficulty with uh when we're setting stuff up so it starts a little bit late yeah so. so so what happens it all depends on when i get home from work and uh i i sometimes it takes me a little longer to get home from work or i get stuck at work late so that's usually what holds us up is because I, I have to watch the show when i get home and uh so i have to get home eat dinner say hi to my wife say hi to my kid today was the last day of school for him and uh watch the show all within like an hour and sometimes it just goes yeah longer, he's so. he's it's gonna come home yeah eat dinner walk the wife kiss the dog so, but i apologize yeah no we put the time up and i i try to get close to it as possible but uh i also like to give it a few minutes so people can roll in too but uh yeah sorry about that guys that's my fault uh too good uh do, 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 do. i don't see any but if i if i missed anybody uh uh gravelane gravelane uh the sailing coconut Oh uh, yes, the sailing coconut. I can't yes. forget the sailing coconut. Oh my god, Aloha! So, I think it's from Hawaii. Uh, yeah, Be careful yeah, ooh, out there. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the Big Island, watch out. Yeah. Um. That's yeah. That's my mom just moved from there for that very reason. Uh, a year ago. Uh, I wonder if her house is still her old house is still there. That's interesting. So, uh, yeah, everybody. If I missed anybody's chat, I do apologize. So please check us out nerdrotic.com and you guys are awesome. You make the show. Okay, yeah, it is seriously definitely. the best part of the show is the chat. So thank and, you and so much. You're the best. This is the reason why we do it is we we like talking about this is what we missed, <clears throat> excuse me, from the comic book store that uh I used to hang out at Gary's store all the time. We used to talk shit about movies, TV shows, all that kind of stuff. And that's what this kind of supplements in a way. Let's do in this. It fills the void in that the social void. All right, man, take us out. Children of Earth, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Otherwise, you might be jumping into some vast unknown towards something that's in the middle of a ring that you really don't recognize what the hell it is. But it's drawing you to it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There you go. And may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Good night, everybody.